in this episode of The Art of Making. Old stems, driftwood, trunks and roots of trees can become a real masterpiece in the hands of a master. Sabuzre, everything about the Kazakhstan instrument, its improvements and modern use. Shinas Guldaulietova is a master of all trades. The whole life of Kazakhs is imbued with music. It sounds in ceremonies and rituals, in everyday life and at holidays. Listening to the sounds of Dombra, Kobus, or Sabuzre, one can fully understand and imbue the history and culture of the Kazakh people. In ancient times, our ancestors made sabuzgha out of reed and uskar was also made from it. Sabuzgha made from reed, different in tube size and structure. For example, the longitudinal sabuzgha is characterized by the range G, A and the short C. The reed stem was cleaned of film and then holes were pierced with a hot iron. The sound of this pipe was similar to the sound of the wind in the reeds. Dysimbek Dilmanov, a craftsman who devoted most of his life to the making of this instrument, or as it is also called the shepherd's pipe, tells us about the structure of the Kazakh Sabuzre its improvements and modern use. I will now tell you how the Kazakh musical instrument Sabuzre is made. I use chestnut wood veneer, you can take birch, much depends on the quality of the material, its thickness and softness. Then I will cover the veneer with glue. After applying the glue, the veneer is dried for 10-15 minutes, then it will be rolled into a tube. The veneer covered with rubber is dried within 3-4 hours. Covering is necessary for strong adhesion of the material. When the rubber is removed, the tube has to be cleaned and cut. There are many legends and traditions associated with Sabuzre. In these legends, the instrument is usually called a living reed. And apparently it's no coincidence because this strong, hollow stem makes amazingly deep sounds. Sabuzre is an open, longitudinal flute where the sound range varies from four to six holes. The simplicity of the design is compensated by the most complex design technique, which uses elements of throat singing. This sabuzgha's range is G. Its length is 85 centimeters. For example, the length of the A range is 70.2 centimeters. And the length of the C range is 58.8 centimeters. No. This pipe is intended for folding the veneer. Until it's twisted, it must be oiled so that the veneer can be removed easily. I use sunflower oil for that.
After drying the glue on the veneer, we begin the process of twisting the pipe. Covering the veneer will give the instrument density and strength. Then it needs to be dried. Next, the craftsman trims the length according to the desired size of the pipe range. Following this, the veneer surface is polished to make it smooth. I mark where the hose will be located on the pipe and I begin to drill. The veneer is glued to the surface of the sponge, which is subsequently sanded. The inside of the sponge is polished longer, because the thinner the part is, the better and the brighter the sound will be. The sounds made by Sabazre immerse the listener in a certain meditative state. Its magical power can pacify the water, euthanize the wind, touch grass, flowers, trees with sound. By opening and closing the playing holes of the instrument, the musician changes the range of sound from rolling and dull to low and high, spreading for tens and hundreds of meters. This completes all stages of production and now Sabazre will go to the workshop for painting and varnishing. <laughs> Musical instruments similar to Sabazre are found among many nations. The Kaval among Hungarians, Moldovans and Bulgarians, the Kurai among Bashkirs, the Kargatui Duk among Turkmens, Soor among Mongols and many others. The mesmerizing sound of this magical instrument can be heard in many Kazakh folklore ensembles and musical and ethnographic bands. Musical instruments remain a part of the culture and history of any nation. It's music that unites different eras and generations, linking the past, present and future and transmitting to us the emotions, feelings and mood of our ancestors. Wood is considered one of the best materials not only for construction or finishing work, but also for the production of furniture and interior decoration. Strength, ease of processing, durability are the most important properties of wooden products. And their use in decorating rooms adds coziness to the room. Wood can be easily combined with other materials, glass, metal and plastic. In the hands of the master, old stumps, driftwood, trunks and roots of trees can become a masterpiece that will decorate any room and make it environmentally friendly. One of the reasons that wooden elements are actively used in the interior is the ability to make them with your own hands. For example, a handmade watch that will act as what is commonly called a highlight of design. 
I have been doing woodworking for over two years, and during this time, I have managed to do a lot. I have some experience. Besides, I really like working with wood. Now I'll show you how to make a watch from wood and epoxy resin. First, I pick up the bright bar, carve out a piece from it that suits my design. After that, we insert it into a special mold, which is filled with epoxy resin. Epoxy dries from three to seven days. It depends on the manufacturer. The watch itself is made in five stages. The first is wood selection, the second is sewing, the third is pouring, the fourth is sanding, and the last, the fifth, is an oil treatment. The master says that the combination of wood and resin will make the watch extraordinary. But in any case, it is based on the wooden saw cut, which must be cleaned of bark and sanded to remove excess. And the more bizarre this base is, the more interesting your watch will look. After I have prepared the wood, it must be filled with epoxy resin. And for this, first you need to make boards. A wooden veneer is attached to the finished mold, which is fixed with silicon glue, so that the liquid resin does not spill. In the mold, a wooden base is placed, which is filled with resin. Epoxy resin is a synthetic product made up of resin and hardener. These two components need to be thoroughly mixed. And here it's extremely important to maintain the proportions. A transparent resin composition is used. Of course, the wooden product itself is very beautiful, but the resin will give it strength, extend its service life. Here I poured resin on the base. Now, to get rid of air bubbles, you need to heat the surface with a burner. The resin dried for three days. Now I will align and cut out the round shape. First, you need to cut the outer circle. For this, I need a miller and a milling compass. Brian Beck himself is inspired by the work of the American artist Greg Klassen. For example, his magnificent handmade tables or amazing design tables with glass ponds called River. This incredibly beautiful furniture is a real art in which aesthetics and functionality are organically combined. But let's get back to the watch. Brian Beck, having processed the surface of the workpiece and made an opening for the clockwork, proceeds to the final grinding and oil application. The last, but probably one of the main, actions is the installation of a watch mechanism in arrows. Yeah. 
So we finished creating the watch. It's made of elm tree and epoxy resin. We added pearl scent pigment to the epoxy resin to produce a pearl effect. Both wood and resin are very expressive materials. Using the alternating method light with dark, warm with cold, and rough with smooth, the craftsmen emphasize both the beauty of the wood and the originality of the pearl resin. And you can be sure that this watch will become a real decoration of any house. Today we will visit the workshop of Genius Gul Dauletova, who sews traditional Kazakh clothes, the bride's dowry, and creates other household items in a national style. Genius Gul is one of those who continue to engage in the craft that our nomadic ancestors once did. In her works, she uses different types of applied arts. This is patchwork and felting, and embroidery, and zirlio, gold sewing. Genius Gul learned all this from her grandmother. Once when I was drinking tea, I focused my attention on sirmak that was made by my grandmother. It was a real felt sirmak. I was so impressed by its ornaments, although I had never paid much attention to it before. I was 16 years old when I began to show interest in the needlework. I was bedridden at the time. I think my condition was the reason for my desire to engage in craft. My grandmother was a craftswoman with great hands. She could make a very beautiful decoration with a yurt. By profession, she was a teacher and she always taught me, think about good things, wake up with good thoughts, and always learn something new. Interest in handicrafts awakened in the young girl the zest for life which she lost after a serious car accident. After a while, the craft became very important for Jenny's school. And her grandmother's instructions always motivated and forced her to move forward. At first, I treated it like a hobby. My grandmother saying this didn't immediately teach me. Apparently, her refusal became a motivation for me. I decided to study it on my own. For more than 15 years, Genis Gul has been engaged in needlework. During this time, she became a participant in fairs, exhibitions, various competitions, where she won different prizes. Now she herself teaches and shares her experience with students. We have a lot of ornaments and patterns. It's not easy to memorize them all. Each of them has its own meaning. For example, we apply ornaments in the form of flowers for this type of clothing. And if they are for a young girl, then the ornaments should be light and gentle.
One of the directions which Jenny Gul works in is the creation of a traditional dowry for the bride. She can do it all. Patchwork blankets, saukile, chapons, pillows and carpets. Such product with ethnic elements is in a great demand. The dowry for the bride was always prepared with great love. Bride's close people gathered together and worked together to create a dowry. And the patchwork blanket, Kurak, symbolized that the girl would become part of a new family. Her works are distributed all around the world. They were taken to India, Russia and Great Britain. Foreign guests have a particular interest in patterns embroidered with beads. This work requires patience. I can spend a lot of time picking the bead after bead. Honestly, it's not easy. Sometimes I get tired as if I hold a very heavy load. But this is a very beautiful art that inspires me. Jinis Gu's sister, Gulshat, who is a graduate of the Academy of Fashion, became her support. Having opened their own workshop, they are engaged in applied crafts together. Now the Devlet of sisters are working on another order. It will be a patchwork blanket. I started working on the patchwork blanket. We call it Shikurak. It will be part of the dowry for the bride. Very often, a pattern resembling a goat's horn is applied to it. If you use a high quality fabric, then the blanket will be strong and will last a long time. That's how we stitch and collect each flap. The works of Jenis Guldaulietova are distinguished by its special style. The craftswoman has her own approach in the selection of colors. Her works are recognizable and have long hat their own admirers. Each artisan has his own style his own taste and aesthetic perception. I can say that there is no limit to perfection in any kind of art. This is a kind of work that requires a daily search, mindfulness and, of course, spiritual purity.